All right, let's look at this example of a discrete distribution. Remember in class I described how the phenomena of flipping four coins um, could be described all the possible outcomes listed and we could create a table. Well, we're doing the same thing here, creating a table. However, there are two rows in this table when there was only one in the example in class. So how do we how do how do we handle this? Well all the same rules must apply. If this is a probability distribution, all the six rules should apply. We're gonna answer these questions and in one way or another use uh, each of those rules. So the first question asks us to verify that this is a legitimate assignment of probabilities. Um, what are we getting at? Well, together these probabilities in the sample space um, are sum to one. So let's check. The each of these cells, call them cells, represents a different mutually exclusive or disjoint outcome. The first one here is um, a person who is a male guy and ha is in occupation A, uh, they would fall into this cell. So there's 12% chance of a person being male and being in occupation A. There's a, um, what's the biggest, 20% chance that a person is a woman and in occupation B. Okay, so that's how we read this table. So to verify that these probabilities sum to 1, so here we have the probability male and A plus male and B plus, and I go through the entire, the entire row, and then add on probability woman and A plus probability woman and B across the entire row to finally women and F adding all of those up, you can do it by adding this row and then this row and then summing the total, your answer should be 100% and it is. Next question, what's the probability that a woman, a worker, is a female? We need to add up across this row when you do that, you get a total of 40%. This is how we would write it. The probability of a woman would be the probability of woman and A, probability of woman and B, and so on across the row. When you add all those up, you get 40%. Next problem, what is the probability that the worker is not engaged in F? Well, the chance of a worker being engaged in F is a matter of, it's found by simply adding these two probabilities, which is 4%. So the probability of not being engaged in F is here. That's 1 minus the probability of F. That's 1 minus, what was the probability of F again? I had to sum down the column. That was 4%. So 1 minus 4% is 96%. Next problem. What's the probability that a worker is engaged in D or E? D or E, well, again, down the columns, we can sum and then uh, consider D or E means add these probabilities together because they are mutually exclusive or disjoint. I can just add them. That's rule number four. So the probability of D or E is equal to the probability of D plus probability of E. To get D's probability, I total down the column of D. And to get E's probability, I do the same. And so I'm just adding together down the columns. For D, it's 0.4. Uh, sorry. 0 0.14 and for E it's 0 0.14 so the total would be 
20%. And that's what we get.